So for white, it would be 0. And then for black, it would be, for example, I mean, for black, it would be 0, 0, 0. So for black, it would be 0, 0, 0. And then for white, it would be 255, 255, 255. And so that's a red value, a green value, and a blue value. Um, and so by mixing red, green, and blue colors, you create all the colors on the screen. So um, let's try that out. Let's say uh, four, and then let's say color equals, um, and then we can do uh, I divided by um, 255, I divided by 255, I divided by 255. And then we can run that. And, hmm, I don't think that's working. Oh, it's not working. So, let's try this. Maybe we're running Python 2? Or actually, no, of course it's not working. Um, this is what we need. There we go. So now you can see we're cycling through um, from 0 to 255. And you can't see it. It looks blue on the screen, but it's actually, um, it's actually black and white. It's not blue at all. Um, so let's, now that we know, we could do, um, we can set color to 255, 255, 255, and then save it. And then we're going to get perfectly white. Um, so let's let's make color interactive though now. Um, and if I go back and we do um, if we do I and then this is called modulus. So this is basically remainder. So we can't go above 255 is the problem here because if we do we're going to send the wrong um, information to the program. And so if you look at our um, our line right now, it has that hard edge at the end. So it instead of it fading from one to the other, it's just going all the way up to that dark black and then straight into white. So if we want this to have that soft edge, we're going to have to add a sign here, just like we did for our x and y position to the color. But color goes from 0 to 255, right? So in order to have our sign uh, be multiplied by the right number, we're going to have to divide 255 by 2 in order to get that, that number. So let's do that now. So let's say, let's create a variable called halfsies. And this is going to be half of our color. And let's use that color that we're using in our color picker. So halfsies equals list and then what we're going to do is what's called a list comprehension here and we're going to say c integer divided by 2 for c in color and so you got to remember color is a list of three different values this is going to unpack each of those values uh, the zeroth element the first element and the second element and divide them by two so it's going to be a list of the colors in half if that makes sense. So if it was 255, 255, 255, it's going to be 128, 128, 128. And we'll use that in order to get our color. So our color equals, let's do half z's 0 plus int half z's half z's. Um, and let's scroll up so that you guys can actually see this. Um, half z's. Um, zero times math dot sin i times point zero one plus um, and then we can do time dot time right and then we need to count our parentheses and then we can copy this paste it paste it again space it over and then we can just change our halfsies 1 to halfsies 2, and then halfsies 2, halfsies 1. And so now if we save this, 
hopefully, yes, we have our cool sine wave that we can change with our knob. And let me just make this so that you guys can see it here. So if I change this knob now, we should be able to change the colors. So now we got three out of our four knobs that we're able to change. So the last knob we can use, um, what should we do? Right, let's just leave it like that. Um, so one more thing we can finally do is create a mode um, for onset detection. So one of the other things that the Critter and Guitar ETC has is this idea of a trigger. And the variable they use is pass through this ETC uh, variable right here that's passed in this draw function. So we do if etc.audio trig or etc.midi note underscore new and then we can just do this. We take this, move it over, move it over. And again, we're moving it over because in Python, the way that you say what piece of code belongs to what other piece of code is through your spacing. And then we can add an else statement. So if, if we're not triggering that sound, then let's do something else. And so for this, I'm just going to copy and paste what we've already got running. And so this will be actually our default. Um, when the audio gets triggered, let's do something else. Let's say here, and this is gonna be a little bit tricky because I don't have any audio right now. If I add audio, we'll be able to see it though. Um, so let's say, um, for now, let's just make a copy of this. Let's make it so that if the audio gets triggered, you see three versions of it. And then let's do X plus, um, let's do, x plus 1280 divided by 4 and then let's do x minus 1280 divided by 4 and so we're going to subtract from a quarter or add to a quarter and so if we save this save and we hit play on some audio here hopefully it's not extremely loud no let's see can i turn down the threshold for this Probably not. Let's see if I can change it on the knob itself. Nope. Alright, so that's really sensitive. I adjust the knob. Well, now we can at least see what it looks like when we have that single version there. Oh, I might actually have a bug in my code. Uh, let's do this. Let's say, let's, yeah, save it. And so it does seem like I have a bug in my code. So this is one of those times where, um, where debugging your code can be really tricky. Um, so right now it's running this code, but it's not running the end code that we have here. So I must have missed something here. Let's do 220, save, and then let's do 120 here, save. Okay. So we can see that it's running the center one. What's happening for that X there? Oh, that's why. No. What could be happening? Interesting. 
So this is like one of the difficult things about debugging on here. So this part of the code is working now. So if we do 720, right, hit save. So now to fill up the whole screen again. However, this part doesn't appear to be working all the way. And the question is why? Screen X. Let's try it again. Let's try hitting play on this audio. Turn up the volume. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we got it. Now we got something. And so one of the things that I want you to notice here is that with this onset detection, um, you really kind of want something dramatically visually different when you're syncing up to audio. So let's try and change what's going on and what we get with the, the onset. Because otherwise it just kind of looks a little bit glitchy. Um, so let's do this. So one cool thing about having these um, these sine waves here for our color is if I change each of these signs constants to be a different number and I save it, you're going to get a rainbow. And so you kind of get the color shifting because each of those cycles of red, green, and blue are cycling on their own. And you can't see it, but on the screen it looks, the colors look much better than what you, you see from the screen itself. You get some really interesting, rich colors. And so if we give ourselves a rainbow of colors, it really is just an insane gradient in general. And then, cool. So now we kind of have the default rainbow color here. Let's add, let's see how that works for the other one um, with that onset now. Let's see if that makes anything look better. A bit. It, you can definitely tell that everything's changing. Um, but what if we change the size of these, right? Let's make our final knob int and then etc.nob3 times 720, All right? And then we need to close that parentheses. And then let's do the same thing for the y uh, axis that we did for the x axis. All right, and then we can do this. And I've just pasted it in and it kind of just totally made my eyes blur. But if we do this and then we say, so we have our X position, right? And we have our Y position. Let's change, and our Y is going from zero to 720. Let's change it to be 720 minus I for these other ones. And so that's gonna give us um, the, the balls coming from the top of the screen going down and balls from the, the bottom of the screen going up. And so if we do 720 minus I, and then one more, 720 minus I. We should have something now that looks pretty different. Let's turn on some audio. And yeah, there you go. Now you can see we get something kind of more nebulous, more different. So I adjust the knob. You can see we get blobs that are kind of taking up less of the screen. And let me adjust. So now we got the, the X and the Y hitting one another and giving us a kind of interactive feedback. So if I hit pause, we should get back to our original setup. One thing that starts to happen here with the Critter and Guitar is I think it gets a little bit back 
backlog with the frames that it's trying to render. And so that's why even a few seconds after I pause the music that you still have to wait for those. And this code we've written so far is really um, not very efficient at all. It isn't necessarily uh, meant to be used as is. If you wanted to speed it up, you'd just take basically um, a screen that you drew to and then copy and what's called blit that screen onto other areas of the screen. Um, I do something like that in my book, Make Art with Python, where we kind of use mirror images and mirror shapes. But I think this is actually a pretty good spot to stop and end this kind of lesson. So let's check it out and let's see how it works with this piano. Oh yeah, oh, okay. I feel like with the piano, it's a little bit better. Again, it's, it's still a little bit slow with catching up to those frames, but it's the start of something for sure. All right, thank you for watching. Um, I'll, if, if you enjoyed this, let me know. I'll see if I can make some more uh, lessons with this Critter and Guitar ETC before I send it back. So thank you.